All right, here's a, uh, a extra special kind of a camera. This is an Exacta, which was made in Eastern Germany. It's got a Schneider Xenon 50F.2 lens, which is a really good, well-made lens. Schneider's a good lens company. And everything about Exacta is a little bit on the ornate side. Their script that they use on, the, uh, on their logo. The design of the camera is odd. Look at the shape of that. It doesn't really fit your hands normally. It kind of wants to slide out of it. But it's definitely a beauty of a lens, of a uh, camera. It's, it's just beautifully designed as far as the way they were going for its looks. It has a waist level viewfinder and it's got shutter speeds of 1,500, 250. Then instead of 125, it has a 150 a hundredth of a second, a fiftieth, and a twenty-fifth, and bulb. And this is a, uh, the kind of camera that's just a treat to take out and shoot with the uh, waist level viewfinder. I like shooting that way. It has a little pop-up doodad so that you can magnify the screen and you can critically focus. That's probably good, although I mostly don't use it. I usually keep that in the down position and I just like holding the camera at waist level and shooting like that. So again, we gotta test the shutter speeds. It's got a left hand release instead of a normal right hand release. It uses the left hand shutter. And the film winds from the right side across the back and across to the left side. So the winder is on the left side and it goes the opposite way too. So here's a thousandth of a second. Let's check the shutters. Here's a one hundredth of a second. Here's a fiftieth. They aren't sounding all that different to me. Here's a twenty-fifth. That's our slowest speed. And that sounds about the same to me too. So I'm not sure that the speeds are all accurate on this. If you're shooting at a five hundred, I'm betting that Probably that one would be accurate enough to shoot outside at sunny 16. But if you were shooting inside and you wanted to shoot something at that 25th of a second, something might be up with that. So we'll take a look inside and see what we see. We'll close this up. And then to open the back, you press this thing down and you pull, the whole back comes out. And you can set it down and Try not to lose it. Your film goes in, again, on the right side, and then you bring it across through these sprockets, across the film plane, and then you'll notice there's a take-up spool missing. There is no take-up spool in this camera. And when I bought it, it didn't have one, and I noticed it, and I thought, well, I'll be able to pick one up. I bought this. This is a uh, take-up spool that came out of a Exacta VX. But for the life of me, this piece here, this little part up here at the top of this spindle, it doesn't raise up at all. This comes out and this creates space, but there's no way that I've been able to get this inside of there because it's just too big. So it's a hair too long to fit in there. So this was made for the VX. I'm betting that the V was slightly different. The VX doesn't have this piece of metal on the bottom, so you can just sort of slide it in. You can just sort of like work it in through the side. But because this piece of metal is here, this spindle is just a little bit too long. So, at the moment I can't use this camera. And I've been looking online, I've been looking for a way to get a, a, a take-up spool, and I found several for the VX. But it might mean buying a broken V camera just so I can get the spool out of it if it indeed has a spool with it. So let's check the shutter speeds. And it's still at a uh, 500th of a second. And it won't shoot. And here's a little trick. Exacta was trying to prevent you from wasting your film. So if the viewfinder isn't open, it won't shoot. So at a 500th of a second, it looks like this. And that looked like it could have been a 500 of a second. I don't, I don't know. It looked pretty fast. Here's a, and this has an arrow. It says only turn it in one direction. So we're only turning it in the direction it says. 
Here's a hundredth of a second. Let's see what that looks like. That possibly was a little slower. Here is a fiftieth of a second. We only have two more slow shutters, a fiftieth and a twenty-fifth. Here's a fiftieth. Do you see what that did? That hung up. That didn't close. So that's not a fiftieth of a second. That's an overexposed negative because the second curtain didn't close. When I pull that forward, you see how it closed the second curtain. So the fiftieth of a second on this doesn't work. The twenty-fifth of a second, let's try that. I'm betting it's going to do the same thing. So the slow shutter speeds, the second curtain is getting stuck. The first one opens, but then the second one doesn't close until you start to advance it. So you would waste that frame because you would let way too much light in and it would overexpose that film and burn it up. So you can shoot it on bulb. Let's see if that works and if it'll close or if it stays open. It also, it doesn't close until you start to move this. So the slow shutter speeds on this aren't working so well, and that's how you can tell. Back to a thousandth of a second, I'm turning this in the direction it says. See, that closes. The speed of a thousand seems to want to turn this in a way that'll make it close. There's a 500, but it's not able to do it at the 100. Let's try 150. That definitely seemed a little slower, and it seemed like that did close okay. Here it is again. So, again, you're trying all these things and you're taking note of what they're doing because when you buy a camera, you need to know, is it working? And what do you need to know to make sure that everything that could be working is and what isn't and whatever isn't working is your negotiating point. Hundreds of a second. So that's the, probably our slowest speed. Also, notice you, you advance it with your left hand instead of normal right hand on a lot of these uh, SLRs. 50th of a second isn't going to work. Huh, it did work. It could be exercises helping it. There's a 50th of a second. Hey, I worked that time. See, that's what happens with these old mechanical cameras. Sometimes they start to work themselves loose. 50th of a second. Let's try it one more time. Now, it seems like that might be a 50th of a second, and that might actually be a good exposure. Here's a 25th. Let's see. I'm not positive this will work. See, it's stuck until I advance it. But let's go all the way back around to the 50th and see if that 50th will work every time now. That seemed to work okay. So I might trust the 50th of a second. If I was shooting a band inside at F2, I might try a frame or two and see if it's working. So that's uh, the exact of the Again, it won't shoot unless this is open. And the closes, you just put one of these down first, the two sides, and then the back, and then the center. To put this back on, you just sort of catch this on the right side of the, of the camera. You just catch that into a little groove. And when you close this side, oh, there's a thing to watch out for. You have to make sure that this little groove down here is lined up with the edge of this so that it's not sticking out. So you want to get that. See again, they didn't make this the simplest. You want to get that lip underneath that lip up here so that it doesn't fall out. Because if you had it closed, let me show you what's not right. If you had it closed like this, then that's not right. That shouldn't be sticking out like that. That groove has to go into the edge of that door. So we'll open this back up. We'll push this back in. And this door has to catch. That's not in right yet. This door has to catch that lip. So now you can see it doesn't come out because it's caught by the edge of the door. Again, very uh, simple design and not always user-friendly perfect, but great little camera. If it works, run a roll of test roll through it, check it out, shoot some black and white. Tri-X in this is like time traveling back to the 50s, and 
I'd love to see what you shoot with it. I'm going to get a raw film in it as soon as I get a way to get a take up reel or maybe find a old raw film and start sanding down the edge of it to try to make it fit. But that's the uh, Xacta V. I hope you enjoyed this. I will bring you more cameras. Keep subscribing, keep watching, and I will bring you more. Thanks so much for watching.